Arizona State University is in metropolitan Phoenix where we built this house and designed it for. Uh, the Sonoran Desert, many people aren't familiar, they, they think desert and you think brown and fairly barren. The Sonoran Desert is actually the second most biodiverse region in the world behind only the Amazon. Meaning we have more species of plants, insects, birds, animals than any area in the world except for the Amazon. So we brought a lot of that biodiversity with us. You can see a lot of it here in the form of cacti, succulents, there are a number of flowers around the corner. The icon of the Sonoran Desert, the plant that most people think of when they think Sonoran Desert is the saguaro cactus, right? The cactus with the arms. That cactus that's right there with the needles on it, that's actually a young saguaro. That thing can grow between 60 and 80 feet tall. It can live to be over 200 years old. It can have as many as 30 of those arms on it at a time. It's a very, very resilient, amazing plant. We wanted to really learn from and understand the way that that plant lives in our extreme climate as a way to inform our house. When I say extreme, not only do we get less than seven inches of annual rainfall, which classifies us as a desert, but on the day that we installed this big bifold door that you'll see when you go inside, it was 122 degrees in Phoenix. So it gets very hot. That plant, that saguaro, there are a couple of different devices that it uses to survive in that uh, really hot climate that we wanted to incorporate in our design and, and that I can illustrate very quickly for you here. The first is that when that tree or when that cactus is very young, it requires a, a nurse tree. It basically shades it and creates a microclimate around it that allows it to survive. For us, our solar canopy is our nurse tree. Not only is this making our house net positive, but it's also creating this great shaded microclimate that shades part of our roof, shades our south facade, and creates this nice outdoor space. The second is that the saguaro, when it outgrows the need for that nurse tree, it's a predominantly self-shading plant. Just like this back uh, golden barrel cactus here, it has these ribs and these needles on it that basically shade it, uh, shade the core of it. So 70% of the sun that hits that cactus in the, in the summer doesn't see the core of the cactus. That allows it to retain its moisture and its core temperature to survive in that really extreme climate. So the facade that you see behind me is an east facade. That facade, those wood cladding members are not just aesthetic, they're about self-shading that facade. So a lot of people say, well, why do you do that on the east? You know, in the morning, don't you want some heat to warm up after a cold night? In Phoenix in the summer, there are many nights where it doesn't get below 90 degrees, especially because of our urban heat island effect. Then when the sun rises the next morning, it can rise as much as 30 degrees north of due east, and it climbs pretty fast in the summer. So it can be well over 100 degrees at 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's all cooking this facade of the house. But shading isn't enough. So we have a three-part system for how we keep heat out of this facade and out of the rest of the building. Shading, ventilating, and reflecting heat. So after shading, behind this panel, and this is a fiber cement panel called Armor Rock, it comes from Texas, and it's a very sustainable material. There's an air gap behind there, about a two-inch air gap. And so heat that radiates through that panel, we can pull cooler air in low, vent warm air high, and essentially create a convective flow so that that heat doesn't make it into the house. But if you understand how heat works, it's not just what you can see, there's also infrared thermal transfer. Behind that cavity, there's a coating. Uh, it's called insulcoat. coat. There's an insulcoat coat wall and there's also a coating on the roof. It's actually manufactured and uh, comes from a company called Enviro Coatings USA in San Diego. That has a ceramic coating to it. It's a, it's a fluid applied membrane, so it keeps moisture out of the walls in the same way that any elastomeric <laughs> membrane does. But it also has a ceramic coating that essentially reflects a lot of that heat, including the infrared heat that you don't see from coming into the house. So those three systems, shading, ventilating, and reflecting, are keeping a lot of that heat from getting in. That insulcoat coat also exists on our roof. The ventilated facade exists all around the house to try to keep heat from getting in. But for seven months of the year, even though it gets very, very hot for a five-month summer in Phoenix, it's actually really enjoyable. Today in Phoenix, it's 75 degrees. There's not a cloud in the sky, 15% humidity, five mile per hour winds. It's beautiful. So we've got these really great outdoor spaces that allow you to live outdoors for seven months of the year and be framed by this great landscape. And the landscape isn't just about bringing you the biodiversity of the plants that we have in the Sonoran Desert, but also the ecosystem that they create. 
So on the Mexican fence post cactus that you see over here, there's one that has a, a flower at the bottom of it that's closed. It almost looks like it's dead. It's actually a night blooming flower. That flower attracts bats as they migrate through the desert. We've seen about 50 bats here uh, in the park since we've been here. In fact, there was one hanging out in the, the west patio for a while. And on that west patio, this wood system screen is actually pulled off of the house and creates a, a great outdoor space. It has some flowering vines growing on the outside of it, bougainvillea. There are two species of bougainvillea that are native to the Sonoran Desert, and they're over there. They've been attracting hummingbirds and bees. So our argument is that even though most people that live in Phoenix live in a single-family detached suburban house, that our argument for the prototype for what that house should be is the house that captures rainwater, creates a great shaded outdoor space, keeping a lot of the heat out of the house, uses a lot of great building technologies like the reflective coating, that ceramic coating to keep heat from getting in, and then employs the, the native species of the desert, not only because these are very heat tolerant and drought tolerant, but also because they'll attract and promote a lot of the other species that live in our second most biodiverse region in the world to continue to thrive. So when you're living outside for seven months of the year, you can really enjoy and be connected to the place that you have chosen to live. So welcome to Shade. Thank you all very much for coming in. As you, as you head inside, the students will walk you through the active systems and the furniture and spaces of the house. I hope that you're all very impressed by what you see. The students have been working very hard. And uh, thank you for coming to Shade.